learn object structuring in JavaScript in just few minutes. Generally, we have objects in JavaScript, right? We, we use them to store a certain amount of information. In this case, we're gonna start with our car object. Our car object is gonna have an ID. It's gonna have make, it's gonna have model and a year. Now, sometimes we would like to store those values, those properties uh, in a variable because we are gonna use them over and over and over and over in a certain function. So what we'll do usually is we'll just define our car ID variable and in that case, we're going to store the car ID, right? The same thing we can do with the car make. And we can just store the car make. And so on, and so on. So you can do the same thing with the model or the year of the car, right? Now, what's object is structuring? Object is structuring it allows you to create or to generate those variables by taking advantage or by using the property as the name of the variable and it will automatically generate or add the value into that particular variable. How does that work? So we will define our cons or let. Either one is fine to define our variable. If you're using old style JavaScript, you can use still the bar, it's gonna be fine. But in whichever way, you'll start in that way and then you will open and close curly braces. And after that, you will do the same. It's gonna be equal to car. Now in here, inside the braces, the cool thing is that you're gonna be able to type the ID. And if you look at my IntelliSense, it's kind of like telling me like, okay, the car has an ID. And if you start looking at all of the other options available, it's gonna tell me it's got a model, a make, or a year, right? It's gonna have all of these options. Now, what's happening here is that I'm creating a variable called ID, and that ID is gonna have the value of nine, four, five, two, one. It's gonna have make, the same thing is gonna happen, and that make's gonna have the value of four. Model, Mustang, year 2016. Isn't that cool? You can just do that in one single line of code. Instead of having four lines of code where you are defining and assigning the values of certain uh, variables in order to use them over and over in your function. Let's say we have a function, our, and our function is going to be called get users car. So let's call it function get users car, in which we provide the users ID. And let's say we have a process in our function some kind of method that allows you to get from the database the car of the user, right? So let's say that we're gonna have our other function that gets the car from the database, right? And it's gonna use the user ID and that's gonna return a car. Now this car, for example purposes, we're just gonna say that it's gonna return this very same value, right? And we decide to call the getCar function. For example, getCar function, we're gonna have to provide the ID. Now, let's say that we would like to do object structuring in this case as well. We will do, in a similar fashion, we will do cons, open and close curly braces and then we will get each one of the properties of that particular car right now there's a problem in here right and is that we have an id and if you take a look at it we have a parameter an argument called id and by definition that's not possible to have two variables named the same way right what do we do in that case? In that case, what we should do is to, instead of saying that we're just gonna get the ID, we can still get access to the value of the car ID and assign it a new name to that particular variable. So instead of calling it ID, we can define it as car ID. In that way, at the moment of using your car ID, 
the value that we're gonna get should be nine four two nine four five two one. Perfect. Now, there are some times where our function, especially if you are working with the database or so, some kind of function that doesn't return all of the properties, like in this case, ID, make, and model, right? So if we make a little change and we say like, hey, our get car function is not gonna return anymore the ID or the car, then what will happen in here if we decide to keep this in this way? Well, Effectively, car ID is going to be undefined, but you can still provide a default value. And how do you provide the default value? Is by opening the equal sign, and right after that, you can just provide whatever value you would like. So if the value you want to give by default is one, you can set it in that way. And now, whenever we call, car ID should be one in this case. If the get car method doesn't return any value. In the same way, if you are not actually renaming this, this variable that we call car ID, but let's say we call this argument people ID, and now all of a sudden we can actually have ID as a valid as a valid name for a variable, we can just simply leave it like that, and in this same way we can have or we can assign a default value to our variable defined using object destructuring. What about arrays? Arrays are a special kind of object in JavaScript as well. And in a similar fashion, if you want to use a special value, a specific value of that array over and over and over, well, you might, might as well just store it in a variable, right? So in this case, we're gonna have our array of players and which is going to have player one, player two, player three, four, and five. And since we're going to use it over and over in our function, we decided to store it in a player one variable for the player one, player two, and so, 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 and so forth. But since arrays are a special kind of objects in JavaScript, we can also apply object destructuring. How do we do that? Well, in this case, what we'll do is to do cons, but instead of using open and close curly braces, we'll do open and close square braces or square brackets. And we will do the equal and then we'll do the players. Perfect. Now we're going to start giving the name of our variable and that variable is gonna assign or it's gonna the value that's gonna given to be given to that variable is gonna be given by order of the items located in that player's array for example we're gonna say that we're gonna have our player one and player one is supposed to have player one value if we decide to do p2 or player two we're gonna have the p play p2 is gonna have the value of player two the same thing happens over uh, with p3 p4 and p5 so this is the way it should display the values if you are trying to use p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 it's gonna be assigned in order those values of the player's array. Now, there's a cool thing about this is that sometimes you just don't want to use all of the items in that array, right? Maybe you just want to use the player one. If you just want to use the player one, then what you would do is just simply remove all of the other uh, variables that you find in your object that you structure, and then it's just gonna automatically select player one now let's say that you don't really want to access p1 in reality you just want to get the value of the fourth item in that player's array and you don't really want to go or define 
the variable names for each one of those other variables or other items so you can store those values or you can access the, the fourth item in that array. So for example, in order to skip all of them, what we will do is just separate it by a comma and that comma will define like we're just skipping one item in that array without really defining any variable name. So we're skipping the player one item, we're skipping the player two, the player three, and now since we're in the fourth item of that array, we're gonna type P4, and in that way, we should be able to access our pay player four, or we're gonna be able to define P4 with the value of player four. Now, there's another thing that I wanted to show you, and is that maybe you just want to keep one value of that array <clears throat> or one item of that array and then you want to generate another array using the rest of the values of that particular player's array so in this case i just want to keep separate my player one and then store in another array my other players we can use simply define player one and as i mentioned before we're going to say that p1 is going to be player one it's going to have this value but how can we generate another array using the, the rest of the values? Well, you will use uh, the syntax. Uh, you will start typing three periods or three dots, and you will define a name for that array that is gonna have all of those other items. In this case, we can call it other players. And other players is gonna have player two, player three, player four, and player five. What if we would like to access all of these players and for example, we don't have a six item in our players array, like in this case. So in this case, we could have, as I mentioned before, P2, P3, P4, and P5. But in case you would like to access P6, in reality, we don't have a six element or six item in our array. And we would like to define a default value. How do we do that? In a similar fashion, what we did with the regular object, while we were destructuring the value and assigning a default value, we can do that the same way with an array while destructuring that object. So in this case, we're gonna assign it the default value by giving it or by using the equal sign. And after that, we can just say simply player six. And now we know that if we have a non-defined six element on their players array we're gonna have a player six as a default value in case we don't find anything on in that six item that was object destructuring in javascript if you knew about this well share in the comments if you didn't know about this little uh, need way to assign and define variables and, and assign values just let me know in the comments how uh, you might use it over and over once you get used to using it uh, it's Pretty helpful, especially if you just want to manipulate specific values of objects in JavaScript without the need of using or storing or keeping all of the objects. That was your tip for today and see you until next time.